Hello, I'm Bill Faulkner and welcome to the 2019 SMRT Safety Video Podcast for MR Safety Week. Now this series of videos is produced exclusively for the SMRT. The first four videos in this year's series addressed MR radio frequency coils, their use, and how they relate to safety. For the final video in this series, I want to review some of those points covered in those videos, as well as some additional safety considerations, which are all focusing on preventing RF-related injuries. So let's get started. Once again, welcome. SAR, or Specific Absorption Rate, is the rate at which energy is deposited into the body, and it, among several other things, affects patient warming. RF-related burns are totally unrelated to SAR. Uh, you can get a burn uh, when using a low SAR setting. So if you've not already done so, I highly recommend that SMRT members take the time to watch this excellent video on SAR and RF burns that was done by Dr. Michael Steckner. The primary reason that radio frequency burns can occur are due to, number one, near-field burns. This is primarily due to the patient having contact with the bore wall during the exam. There are resonant frequency, resonant circuitry burns. An example would be when conductive metals are within the volume of the RF transmit coil. And then large caliber loops, which can be formed by skin-to-skin -skin contact. Padding and separation are critical components of patient positioning that cannot be overlooked or ignored. Padding is necessary between the patient and the bore wall. Care should be taken to avoid skin-to-skin -skin contact. Common locations for burns from skin-to-skin -skin contact include, but are not limited to, the medial calves, medial thighs, a bare finger or knuckle touching a bare thigh. This illustration from a Siemens user manual demonstrates proper positioning and padding. Given that the RF transmit coil is at the bore wall, padding of 0.5 to 1.0 centimeters should always be used to ensure that the patient is not in contact with the bore wall. Full thickness burns, such as the one shown here, can occur due to bore wall contact. Additionally, a large percentage of burns resulting from bore wall contact aren't seen until a week or more after the injury. And that's because the burn occurs below the skin surface. Because our pain sensors are superficial, the patient will not report any pain or even discomfort during or after the exam. All MR Systems user manuals instruct the operator to use appropriate space or padding to prevent bore wall contact. Always remove any unnecessary and non-MR labeled metallic items before positioning the patient in the magnet, especially if the items will be within the volume of the RF transmit coil. Examples of items which can be problematic include EKG electrodes or leads, medication patches with metallic backing, and any other items such as wires or electrodes. This is a sad example of what can occur when a patient monitoring device not designed or tested for the MRI environment is used during an MRI exam. This five-week-old female underwent an MRI exam under general anesthesia. Unfortunately, a conductive pulse oximeter was used. Furthermore, after the exam, exposed wiring was noted where it connected to the wrist sensor. This fourth-degree burn resulted in amputation. All patients should be changed out of street clothes into MR-appropriate attire provided by the MRI facility. And Jeff John, an SMRT member and a VP with CDI, provided us with this sign which is placed in each dressing room. It clearly explains why it is important that patients change out of street clothes. 
specifically that athletic wear and other garments can contain invisible metallic microfibers which have been reported to heat during an MRI exam and result in skin burns. Here's a published report of second-degree burns along the flank of an 11-year-old girl who underwent an outpatient MRI exam of the spine for evaluation of scoliosis. She was wearing a gray undershirt under a long-sleeved white t-shirt and gray sweatpants. According to the published paper, the site did everything right except change the patient. The patient was sedated and after the exam, the burns were noted along her flank. As discussed in a prior video, it's critical to know the conditions of use of whatever conditional device a patient may have. Some have restrictions as to the type of RF transmit coil which can be used. Remember that some head coils are transmit and receive while others are receive only. It's important to make sure that the coils you have are clearly labeled so an inappropriate coil would not be utilized. The SMRT and the FDA created safety posters some years ago. This burn prevention poster, along with other safety posters, can be freely downloaded at the web address shown here. And that brings us to the end of this, the final video in our MR Safety Week 2019 video podcast. I hope you found them to be informative and useful. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch them. So until next time, this is Bill Faulkner. Thanks again and take care.